Hello and welcome back to the channel. So if you're looking for a new CF Express Type B memory card for your high speed camera like the Nikon Z8, then you're in the right place. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the ProGrade Gold 512 gigabyte Gen 4 CF Express Type B memory card. And yes, that is a mouthful, trust me. So I bought this card last week. I've been trying it out ever since then and it has been incredibly impressive. Now, as I say, this is a Gen 4 card. I'm going to get into the differences between Gen 2 and Gen 4 cards too as well later on and why I think this Gen 4 card could be for you. So come on, let's get into it and I'll walk you through it and talk you through it. So as I explained, I bought this ProGrade 512 gigabyte card last week. It cost me roughly around 250 euros, which is an absolute steal for a 512 gigabyte CF Express Type B memory card. I've been using it in my Nikon Z8 all week. I've been using it for both photography and videography. Before we go any further, I should say I have absolutely no affiliation to any card manufacturer. This video was not sponsored. I bought this card myself. These are my own honest thoughts on it. And I'm just sharing it with you because I think it might help you going forward. I'm going to have this video broken into chapters. So we're going to be looking at a number of different aspects. It is Gen 2 versus Gen 4. What's the difference? How well it works for video, hot card warnings, how well it works for photography. And there's a few things might surprise you there too as well. So um, yeah. Let's, let, let's look at it. Hot card warnings. Yes, one of those things we all hate to see coming up on our Nikon Z8. So it was one of the very first things I decided to do with this camera was to try it in video mode because there is nothing more demanding on your card really as such than shooting continuous video at high frames per second on high resolution. So I'm going to talk you through exactly what I did and what the settings were. But before we get into the settings, I just want to let you know there's no cheating, there's no trickery done here. This was all done with the internal battery all the doors and flaps were all closed on the actual car camera itself. The back LCD screen was up against the camera body. It wasn't pulled out, which is one of the tips a lot of people will give you to pull this out to help dissipate some of that heat into as well, or to use USB PD to power the actual camera itself. Again, the battery isn't generating heat inside and you can let the battery door open, which is gonna also help you from a heat point of view. And the other thing we'll do too as well is, the actual hot card warning sensor temperature I have left on its default or lower setting. So I did not increase that through the menu. So this is going to be the type of result you could expect yourself when you try it out. The other thing I should mention too as well is these were all recorded in 12-bit NRAW. So the very first recording I tried in this was at 8K 60p. So it recorded away for 11 minutes with absolutely no hot card warning coming up on the screen. So what I did then is I deleted the previous recording. I took the card out and I just checked the temperature and it was reading or the external shell on the camera or on the card was reading at about roughly around 42 degrees Celsius. Now this was all being recorded inside in a room that was at 20 degrees Celsius. So I was kind of going right it is getting warm but it's not getting too hot. So I put the card back in again, I formatted the card and I started my second recording. And in my second recording, again with the same settings, it recorded for roughly nine minutes before the hot card warning came up. So that's 20 minutes at 8K 60p, more or less back to back recordings before the hot card warning came up, which is incredibly good going. So fair play. This card really does seem to work quite well. Now, I should also mention, it did actually finish the second recording. There was no issue whatsoever. It didn't stop recording, just a hot card warning came up. So I let the whole thing cool down and I thought, look, okay, I'm personally not going to be recording a lot at 8K 60p. So what I decided to do is I decided to try 4K 120 frames per second. So I thought, look, let everything cool down, reformat the card and fire off my recording then. So at 4K, 120 frames per second, it will give you 18 minutes and one second recording time. So the first recording flew through. There was no problem whatsoever. Again, absolutely no hot card warning. So what I did then is I deleted 
the recording that was on the CF Express card and I had to replace the battery because my battery was getting a bit low at that stage. So I started the recording again for another 18 minutes. It was at roughly 14 minutes into the recording, the hot card warning came up. Now it finished the rest of the recording absolutely perfectly, but you have to remember that was 32 minutes of recording, practically back to back at 4K, at 120 frames per second, in NRAW, at 12 bit recording quality, and also in high quality mode. So 32 minutes under those conditions, I think any car that can do that is looking really good from the video side of things. Now that's all fantastic. It works away beautifully from the videography point of view and hot card warnings aren't an issue. But if you're a photographer that shoots wildlife or sports, and I suppose a lot of your work depends on shooting in burst mode at 20 frames per second continuously, how well is it gonna work for you? Well, rather than me walking you through it and talking you through it, what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna show you. I have the camera set here and I'll switch on. It's set to 20 frames per second. And what I'm gonna do is continuously fire off photographs for about seven or eight seconds. And then we're gonna look at it afterwards and we're gonna see how much of a gap there is. So what I do is fire off the shots first. Ready, steady, go. Gonna pause for one, two, and fire off again. Pause for a second. Pause for a second. So as you can see here, this is the start where we were shooting at 20 frames per second. It's working on the buffer, recording everything, everything to the internal buffer in the camera. We start to see these little gaps here then. Those gaps are when the buffer is actually writing to the card itself. Now, even though it's still writing to the card and you can see those gaps, it is still averaging out at around 10 frames per second. Where the complication is here is, if you're the type of photographer who needs to sit in the shutter button for five seconds at a time to capture a bird in flight or a fleeting moment in sports, then this card probably isn't for you. But the beauty of the Gen 4 card is it seems to be more efficient. Going back to the video settings, it's going to help you get longer recordings without that hot card warning. The other thing then too as well, of course, is it is a Gen 4 card. So it's going to mean you can transfer files from the card through a Gen 4 reader onto your computer a lot faster. The cheaper price then again too as well, of course, is going to be a serious advantage for this card. I think this card is going to be a great all around card for a lot of people using the likes of Nikon Z8 or the Z9, for example. So after looking and listening to that and seeing how the buffer is filling and transferring data to the card, what do you think? Is the likes of the pro grade gold 512 gigabyte CF Express Type B card, right for you. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think? What is your card of preference? And what card have you found has worked better for you? Thanks again for watching everyone. Um, mind yourselves and see you out there.